Hello foodie friends and welcome back to the fourth and last installment of our Titanic extravaganza. This week we're going to do a really simple dessert from first class that you are absolutely going to love. Oranges in 1912 were seen as exotic and an expensive fruit, which is why they would have been a treat even in first class. But before we get to the dessert, Let's go ahead and look a little bit into the men who ran the restaurants and the kitchens on Titanic and made over 6,000 meals every day for the passengers and crew. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Charles Joffin was the chief baker on the Titanic, and on the night of the disaster, he spent his time alternately getting drunk, throwing deck chairs off the ship, and hurrying women and children into the lifeboats. As the ship began its final plunge, he somehow managed to climb up to the very stern, climbing over the railing and hanging on to the very back of the ship. In his words, he rode the Titanic down like an elevator and didn't even get his head wet. He was therefore the last survivor to leave the Titanic. As for the dining room he served, much of it was destroyed during the ship's breakup. But in 2003, James Cameron in his movie Ghosts of the Abyss was able to explore with submersibles the only intact portion of the dining room. Using powerful lights, he was able to light up the leaded glass windows for the first time in over 90 years. The light showed the colorful glass and lit up the room as if sunlight was streaming in once again. Dishes and teacups were still stacked neatly on a sideboard. You could almost imagine the room as it was, with tables of starched linen, beautiful crystal, and fresh flowers, and hear the ghosts of her passengers as they laughed and talked during the last dinner on the Titanic. For this recipe, you will need four navel oranges, fresh spearmint, a pinch of cream of tartar, a dash of almond extract, two egg whites, a half a cup of sugar, and orange sherbet. Preheat your oven to 425 degrees and begin by cutting off the top quarters of your oranges. Turn them over and slice off just the very bare end so that the oranges will sit flat. Carefully scoop out the inside of the orange. On the Titanic, they would have used the inside to actually make the orange sherbet. I chose instead to buy my orange sherbet and to save the inside of the oranges for some smoothies. Place your oranges on a baking sheet lined with wax paper and freeze them for 30 minutes. Pack all your oranges very firmly with the orange sherbet. You can then return the oranges to the freezer for another 30 minutes or even up to two days. To make the meringue, beat your egg whites until nice and frothy and then add your cream of tartar. While you're still beating, very gradually add your sugar. Continue beating the egg whites until you get very stiff peaks, then stir in your almond extract. The best meringue can be made by bringing your egg whites to room temperature before you begin the process. Using a piping bag, very quickly pipe the meringue onto your frozen oranges. Immediately bake them at the 425 degrees for two minutes. Then you will reduce your temperature to 375 degrees and continue to bake them about three to five minutes or until your meringue is set and browned. Garnish with your spearmint leaves and serve immediately. All right, so we have pulled these out of the oven. Um, the only thing about this dessert is you have to pull it out of the oven and serve it quick yeah. because this ice cream will melt. 
but we're gonna go ahead, since we've actually made this dessert before when we did a Titanic themed dinner for some friends, we're, we already know how it tastes. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a five because- It's excellent. It's it a wonderful good. dessert. So we're just gonna go right into cost and time. So for time, you know, I've decided on a four. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it doesn't take a lot of time. There's your freezer does most of the work. You're yeah. just you're just basically making sure everything is frozen enough to be able to actually put it in the oven. Yeah. So that's simple. And in terms of cost, I'm actually I'm going to give this a five. Yeah. Because this yeah. is actually the cheapest first class uh, of anything yeah. <laughs> a recipe anything in this book. This is a really accessible recipe mm -hmm. um, for people to do if you want to just do something quick and doesn't cost a whole lot but still get a taste of something that was on the Titanic. Get something a little extra fancy. Yeah, so I think that'd be great. Um, so, oh, what is, so what does that make it? It's a five, a five, and a four. Five, five, and four, that's a... We have got a 4.67, Yeah. if you want to round it up. And that's a really highly rated dessert. Yeah. That's one of our best rated recipes, actually. Definitely. Yeah. So in terms of the cookbook, I'm still sticking with my five. Mm -hmm. Because out of this whole month of recipes, we've not had a bad tasting recipe yet. No, it, it's food. been wonderful food. So even if you weren't interested in the Titanic, just for the recipes alone, it's a wonderful book. I mean, you're you know you're gonna get a really good idea of historical food. It, it's just I cannot praise this cookbook enough. I I really can. Yeah. yeah. So I would say overall, this month of Titanic recipes has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. it, any of them you wanted to try would not be a mistake. No, nothing we've tried yet. If you if you get the book and you find something that you don't like, I'll be shocked. I yeah, I yeah. would be too. I would be absolutely <laughs> yeah. shocked. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and close it because our ice cream is melting. Yeah. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. So I really hope you've enjoyed this month of Titanic historical food as much as we have. So I hope you guys get to try some of these recipes and commemorate the Titanic and eat some good food at the same time. Sounds good. Yeah. And now stay tuned for next week because we are going to move out of the realm of Titanic and straight into Anabaptist cooking. Oh, boy. Yeah. We're going to go through Amish Mennonite Hutterites. Okay. Yeah. Some groups you may not have heard of that are living right here in the United States and have a fascinating food history. So thanks for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this month. See you later. Bye. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button for future videos. In the meantime, here are two videos you may enjoy. Thanks for watching.